Hello everybody, Jim here, and look at this beautiful spring day here in uh, Tachikawa, still in Tachikawa. Uh, I think I should have already published that uh, video I shot at the Sudagaya in Tachikawa recently. Uh, while I was there, I saw on Google Maps that there was actually a book-off location uh, not too far from that Sudagaya. It was probably about a 20-minute walk. Uh, so I, it was a really beautiful day. The weather was great, so I thought a nice walk over uh, would do me some good and uh, hoped to find some games. So here it is, the other book off in Tachikawa, because some time ago I made a video at the, uh, the book off Super Bazaar near the station, and that was really great. So you saw there, they've got all kinds of stuff, anime, this and that, and uh, movies, manga, of course, but... Uh, Getting started in a case that was marked as Hard Parts, which uh, is funny. You thought Hard Off was funny. Uh, labeling uh, a cabinet Hard Parts uh, because there's hardware in it. Uh, just these few random uh, retro games that were in the case. Uh, we're going to see uh, in just a minute that they actually did have some retro games for sale. So we're going to take a look at that. But first, before we get to all the retro stuff... Uh, they had quite a lot of modern stuff, too. A bunch of these marked as new. So, uh, this is one of the few book-offs that I've been to where they just get new games in stock. So, you can buy them brand new. So, that's cool. So, they had PS4, PS5, Switch, and uh, all that good stuff. And I actually did end up picking myself up a Switch game today. As we uh, take a quick looky-see here. Uh, this game right here for 2,700 yen. They had the uh, Clonoa uh, HD collection. So Clonoa, Door to Phantom Isle, and Clonoa 2. So I actually did end up taking that home with me. They got some other stuff here too, Kimetsu no Yaiba, whatever that's called. Uh, and then some of these here, you could go and uh, get them up at the register, I suppose. Um, I was tempted, I, I want to get the new uh, Fatal Frame uh, for Switch, which I have not picked up yet. But uh, I didn't feel, because I just spent like a big chunk of money at the Sudagaya, picking up games there. So I was kind of being frugal, I guess, in this book off. Um, it was kind of a smaller hunt. So the only thing I picked up for myself in here was that Clonoa collection. As we're perusing some Switch games, Mario this and, and uh, anime that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, one of those people just listen to yourself talk. Vita games, all right. Some Gravity Days and some other various things. Some Fate, all that good stuff. So they had a bunch of Vita, 3DS, uh, that kind of stuff. Any book off you go to, pretty much, you're going to find uh, a lot of the more modern handhelds. In particular, 3DS games, they'll probably have a lot of. And Vita games, PSP, probably a lot of PS3 as well. Maybe even PS2. Um, that era of games, pretty much any book off, they're going to have a whole bunch. Um, but it's kind of hit or miss if you find retro games. As we're seeing some stuff like Kirby and Conan and you know, Harvest Moon, I think. All cool stuff. I'm not the most learned person uh, when it comes to handhelds because I've had you know a number of handhelds in the past. Game Boy, DS, 3DS, uh, Neo Geo Pockets and stuff, but they've never been like my main focus. we got some PS5 and PS4 stuff here. New stuff. Again, stuff that's kind of out of my scope of expertise. But we got PS3 games here. And they are divided by genre, which I always like to see because I can go straight to the fighting games. Like here, we got Street Fighter. We got JoJo, which I actually did just recently pick that game up on the Switch. And it's okay. Um, Tekken 6, awesome. Dragon Ball, one of those. Dragon Ball games. Like, after the Tenkaichi Budokai games, I kind of checked out on the Dragon Ball Z stuff. And, of course, some Naruto and some Dead or Alive. All great. Um, yeah, moving on. I mean, I, I kind of was under, you know, thought, okay, that's that's gonna be it. This is all they, they really have. Uh, we got some Wii, some GameCube. Um, I kind of wasn't anticipating finding, like, good, like, proper retro games. Um, but we're looking at some some stuff here on the GameCube. Battle Stadium D.O.N. Dragon Ball One Piece Naruto. Uh, Smash Brothers style game. 
or what do they call those, like Battle Royal games or something. Uh, Pikmin and some other various things, not too bad on the prices. Uh, 480 yen for Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, which I like a lot. I actually really like the Mario Golf games. 900 yen for Double Dash, which is nice too, though I haven't played Double Dash in forever. Like, I played the absolute living hell out of, um, you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, whatever it's called. Um, so I thought that was it. But no, moving on, kind of like further down the aisle, we had some more stuff. We got some Xbox 360 games, which I don't come across too many of those. And here's pretty cool. They had a copy of Catherine for 900 yen. So that's like maybe $7. And while having, you know, I got Catherine full body, and uh, that, you know, kind of makes the original obsolete. But still, that's a great game. When it came out, it was uh, kind of a breath of fresh air. Cool story, great graphics, atmosphere, and the gameplay. Really great. A uh, really fun puzzle game. At the time, I don't think too many people were thinking puzzle games. That's the next wave. Uh, but I am quite the Catherine fan as we uh, take a look. And now we move on to PS2. So they had some pretty cool PS2 and even a little bit of PS1. But as you can see here, lots of copies of Intelligent Cube. And a couple of uh, Intelligent Cube finals. Ace Combat 2 for 270. That's nice. I guess Intelligent Cube just sold like a million bajillion copies in Japan because I find it everywhere. And it's usually like a couple of bucks. Uh, some Common Rider, uh, the Capcom Generation uh, Volume 2 with uh, Makaimura and I think Dai Makaimura. Uh, the uh, Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins. And another Common Rider game, Common Rider Agito. Which, which one is that? That's a good question. Um, there are so many Common Rider games, and I honestly forget how to, you know, the differentiate between them. I have no idea sometimes. Or most of the time, really. Uh, some SimCity, some other various things. So they had a lot of just kind of like random PS1 stuff. 900 for the original Silent Hill, which uh, that cover is interesting, isn't it? Just a bunch of blood on a wall. That's going to move some copies. I, th I feel like they could have done better than that. Um, but as we move along, what do we got here? We got a lot of copies of Crash Bandicoot games. Uh, Crash 3, Crash 2, the original Crash. Uh, that's nice that a Western property like Crash Bandicoot uh, became so popular in Japan. Uh, those old Crash Bandicoot uh, commercials are just like classic. 270 yen. Like $2 for Star Ocean Second Story. One of my... Uh, absolute favorite RPGs on the PS1, actually. I really, really enjoyed that game uh, back in the day. Rayblade. And you might be asking yourself, what is Rayblade? I haven't the foggiest. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, Tetris Plus. Pretty cool. Anything that says Tetris, it's probably going to be awesome. 270 yen. A, a $2 game is Tekken 3. Uh, 480 yen for Chocobo Racing, which is a decent game. It's, it's you know, it's no Mario Kart, but it's pretty good. And 270 for Dino Crisis. That's really good. Two bucks for a copy of Dino Crisis. And these Biohazard games, these are also 270 yen. 900 for Biohazard 2 Dual Shock, but that's okay. 900 for Namco Volume 2. It's got Xevious, it's got Mappy, uh, it's got other various games on there. So those are cool. A little old school Namco uh, arcade collections. 270 for Ultimate Battle 22. Boy, that game really broke my heart as a kid. I um, I imported the Dragon Ball Z games uh, when I was uh, I don't know how old was I? 13, 12 or 13. And uh, man, Ultimate Battle 22 was just a real kick in the balls. I I, I imported it from this like little catalog my friend had. Uh, spent all the money I had to get that and the other ones and just playing that game after so much waiting and anticipation Being such a massive Dragon Ball Z fan. It was just so heartbreaking because it sucks really really bad um, Bomberman Wars, I, I guess that's maybe like a Bomberman strategy game I'm talking and not even mentioning those like Brave Fencer Musashi and Dragon Quest all kinds of stuff the Rurouni Kenshin RPG pretty cool in case you didn't know there's a Rurouni Kenshin RPG and a fighting game on the PS1. So, for all you Samurai X fans, we've got some Tenchu, we've got some Legend of Dragoon, Rockman 8, Greatest Hits version, and it's 900 yen. So, that ain't bad. Uh, honestly, that's probably what, like, uh, 
$7 game, a little less than $7 maybe, so that ain't bad. Some PS2 stuff, including Eco and uh, I think Onimusha in there. King of Fighters 11 for 1100 yen. So that's like a, I don't know, a nine, eight or nine dollar game. So that's pretty cool. And Guilty Gear Double X Accent Core Plus, it's uh, 270 yen. So if you got a couple of bucks in your pockets, get yourself some Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus. They just kept on adding on to those titles, didn't they? They just wanted those titles to be a paragraph at some point. Uh, look at all those Kingdom Hearts. There's a lot of those, and a lot of Tells, and a lot of Hack, and a lot of Dragon Quest, oh my god, and Final Fantasy. You would think those games were really popular in Japan. Uh, Denshi Dego 3, not really for me, no thank you. Hajime no Ippo 2 for 480. Some uh, boxing for you, and Midnight Club, uh, the original Midnight Club. I remember when that game first came out. Uh, I mean, people lost their minds over it. Uh, Retoro game, uh, that's what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, Midnight Club was a force back in the day. So we got some N64 games. We got tennis, we got this, that, and the other thing. Mario 64. This is kind of inconvenient. I have to kind of stretch, reach way up there. But there's Kirby, there's Poyo Poyo, there's Mario this and Mario that. Baseball. Baseball out the yin yang. And as I'm recording this, the World Baseball Classic is underway. We're expecting Japan to uh, take home that title again. Thank you very much. Now we got some Mario games, 480 yen. Ooh, Bomberman Hero, that's 270. That's pretty good. And some Mario Karts and all that stuff. I don't really care for um <laughs> how they have the games here. I got to, you know, you got to pull everything out individually. You know, it's fine when you're not filming a game hunting video and you got all the time in the world. But as I'm holding this GoPro in my hand, and anyone who's like held a GoPro without the little rubber thing on it, because uh, I don't have that, I just have the GoPro itself, you know those things get pretty hot. Uh, but we got some Rama, we got Mario games, I think we got Doraemon, Mario Collection, which is cool, we've got Kirby Superstar, some Mickey, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, can't complain. Got Odin Setsu 2, Fatal Fury 2, 270 yen, 480 for Yu Yu Hakusho 2. Good, good stuff. Rockman X2, 1500 yen. And uh, Cho Makaimura Bomberman Final Fight 2, 1500 yen. That is also not bad at all. Yoshi's Island, Dragon Ball Z, Ranma 1 half, Street Fighter 2, Rockman X, the original for 900 yen. And some boxed games as well, including Gambare Goemon 3, really great game, Japan exclusive. That was the most expensive game I think I saw today, it was 5,400 yen, it's about 45 bucks for that game. And here's the test, 900 yen for a complete copy of Super Mario Kart. That's nice, If you know, that's one you, you want to test out whether or not a, a store's prices are at least okay. See what they're charging for Mario games. If they're not overcharging for those, uh, then, you know, they're okay, I guess. Uh, we got some Famicom stuff here. I do like some of that. Some King Kong 2, some Door Door. This is a fun little game. Uh, some whatever the hell that is. <laughs> I always forget. Uh, Dragon Quest, good. Old school Nintendo soccer. And uh, Hector 87. With a cool sticker on the back. So whatever the hell Hector 87 is, and some Konami YY World, 1500 yen, fun game, for sure. What else we got? Keep going, Jim, just keep pulling them things out there. We got all day. Oh, there's Excite Bike, there's Magical Taruru Tokun, fun little platformer. Uh, the original Mario Brothers, love it. Super Mario Brothers, love that too. Who does not like some good old Mario Brothers? Ice Climbers, pretty cool. Captain Tsubasa. And Hokuto no Ken 2, a.k.a. I think that, yeah, yeah, that one did get a North American release, didn't it? Fist of the North Star on the NES. Okay, there you go. Uh, 1500 for Rockman 3, and it's a nice clean cart. And 480 for Commando. Uh, Sinjo no Okami, as it's called in Japan. Dragon Ball 480, a.k.a. Dragon Power on the NES. Can't go wrong with that. Some uh, Jaja Maru, or Ninja Kun, whichever one it is. Uh, and then a whole bunch of Game Boy games here. 
Um, I was thinking about, I'm going to pull these out individually, but then no, look, there's a nice little uh, visual for you. So there are a bunch of Game Boy games for me to dig through, which I eventually did. We got Mario 3, we got Dragon Ball Z, we got Dragon Quest 2, we got Dr. Mario, and Final Fantasy 3, 2300 for that complete. Good stuff. And we even got some nice boxed N64 games here. Not many, but some. And these boxes were in surprisingly good shape. Uh, so I was happy to see that. So I actually picked up a couple of these. Picked up some of their Super Famicom games. Some Famicom games as well. And uh, not Sentimental Graffiti, but this Lunar. I actually did end up picking up this Lunar Silver Star Story. And this Biohazard Code Veronica for 480 yen. Yes, I will take that all day. And some Virtua Cup. So there you go. And then a couple of little extra things there. But, uh, so yeah. Not a mountain of games, mind you, but uh, just enough for me to find some good things to send out to some nice people. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye.